thing and bend it up towards me and kick your beat shoulder at the park. Do not put your foot up. When I say your right foot, I said your right foot, not your left foot. You want to help right, I'll help right, I'll help right, I'll help. Turn to the right, then turn to the left. Following the popularity of Scared Straight in the 1970s, a number of research studies compared children who participated in the program to control groups and discovered that many of the kids who participated in Scared Straight programs were actually worse off than those who did not. Along with the teenagers on the program, there were also numerous guards and police officers on the show, but Deputy Lyle was the most well-known and notable of them all. There were several startling events that no one expected to happen to him. In today's video, let's take a closer look at what happened to Deputy Lyle, the famous officer from Beyond Scared Straight. Like and subscribe to the channel, otherwise these spiders will crawl on your feet tonight. You have five seconds to do so. Who is Deputy Lyle? Jonathan Casey Lyle worked as a deputy sheriff in Floyd County, Georgia. Due to his gentle encouragement with problematic youngsters in the Floyd County Sheriff's program, he was generally regarded as the most popular deputy on Beyond Scared Straight. Prior to joining Floyd County Sheriff's Department, Deputy Lyle served in the U.S. Army. Deputy Lyle's attitude to the youngsters may have been influenced by his time in the U.S. Army. The humorist and seeming sadist that makes for the greatest drill instructors came out in him. He had no tolerance for youngsters who seemed to be confronting him or behaving in a disrespectful manner. He slapped them with immediate negative consequences. Deputy Lyle placed a high value on decency and respect. Even in little breaches in good manners, drew his notice, criticism, and wrath. He had no qualms about checking what he thought was sloppy or poor conduct. He had the same for the want of a nail mentality that the greatest warriors possess. Don't take any chances and don't be a moron. In the series, Deputy Lyle was a popular officer. He didn't always take himself seriously, and he was prone to making loud, noisy comments. Behind his larger-than-life persona, he hid a genuine concern for the children. His military experience most likely created his strong desire to monitor the juvenile delinquency of participants in a way that may seem cruel or even nasty at first, but is based on time-tested techniques. Basic training is a furnace in which sloppy civilian conduct, apathy, and lack of discipline are burned away. The primary objective of Deputy Lyle's job was to instill in the youngsters a strong sense that the position they were in was for real, that it was not a joke, and that they were on the verge of going to prison if they did not alter their ways. When children failed the program, he felt deeply wounded. This was particularly evident when Toby returned after being accused of assaulting his mother. Deputy Lyle's presence on Beyond Scared Straight on Season 3, Episode 13, Toby and Deputy Lyle first met. Toby was arrested and charged with 15 counts of assault, aggravated assault, and assault with a dangerous weapon during the prison tour. Deputy Lyle did his best to tear Toby down during the trip, yelling at him for small infractions. For example, each child was instructed to face the wall at a single point during the tour but Toby was facing the window to the left of the wall. Floyd County uses a staged display of the harshness of prison as one of its techniques for confronting the youngsters. They withdraw to enable the youngsters to be hazed by hand-picked convicts. We just let the inmates do whatever they want. The guards rush in and take control of the situation after the prisoners break into the youngsters' cells and plunder them. Toby had misplaced his blanket and spit cup. When another deputy inquires about Toby's blanket, he responds coldly that it was taken by one of the prisoners. Deputy Lyle, enraged, swoops in and defends the deputy, telling Toby that he's had enough with his attitude and that he'll hope that Toby violates the law and gets arrested in his prison. He even threatened to arrest Toby with disorderly conduct, simply to have him locked up when the disturbed adolescent refused to answer his inquiries. The colorful, vivacious deputy's prayers were fulfilled eight months later. Toby was arrested for allegedly beating his mother. 
Deputy Lyle states in an interview that Toby can most effectively redeem himself in his views if he speaks to the other youngsters and stops them from committing the same errors he did. Toby expresses regret by telling the youngsters about how he was forced to give up his food tray. He expressed concern about being beaten down. He was questioned for his prisoner number by Deputy Lyle. Without glancing at his ID bracelet, Toby recites the number. He knows it so well that he doesn't have to look at it, Deputy Lyle adds. Toby is imprisoned in a cell that was designed for two prisoners, but now holds three. It's necessary for someone to sleep on the floor. Toby was released on probation after serving two years in prison. He was charged with narcotics possession and weapons possession by a convicted felon in 2016. He was charged with possession of methamphetamine in 2019. At the Floyd County Jail, he was charged with felony degree damage to a cell floor. Aside from Toby, Deputy Lyle also dealt with another teenager. Bakuria is a vivacious young woman with a sour disposition. Deputy Lyle questioned her about her sloppy shirt-wearing style and inquired whether she did everything in life the same way. He then goes on to question Bakuria whether she behaves the way she does because of her upbringing or because she chooses to. He goes on to explain that it can't be her parents' fault since they cared about her enough to enroll her in this program. He then demonstrated to Bakuria one of his gadgets that would force her to do anything he wanted. Deputy Lyle and other police turn Bakuria around and make her push her nose against the wall when she begins giving him attitude. Bakuria first refuses, but when Deputy Lyle attempts to tase her, she eventually gives up. Others in the prison, as well as he, were able to persuade her to change her ways. What happened to him? A high-ranking law enforcement official has died. Late last week, Floyd County Sheriff's Office Deputy Jonathan Lyle was declared deceased at his home. Deputy Coroner Gene Proctor discovered Lyle unconscious on Thursday and declared him deceased. Deputy Lyle's death was revealed on 28th of April 2016. At the time of his death, he was 36 years old. Deputy Coroner Gene Proctor discovered him unconscious at his house and declared him dead. He died as a result of a heart attack. He leaves behind his wife, two daughters and son. He also leaves his mother and stepfather behind. Lyle made an appearance on the A&E television show Beyond Scared Straight in 2013 when the network filmed two episodes at the Floyd County Jail. Lyle became one of the show's most well-known faces as a result of his sometimes over-the-top and outrageous endeavors to get the recognition of the program's teens in trying to entertain them whilst they rebuild their lives. That concludes our video. So, what is the episode with Deputy Lyle that you will never forget? Do you think Deputy Lyle is the only officer that has a goal and principles for his job? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Before leaving, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications on our future content. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one.